Thank you for your patience, everyone. And uh, again, welcoming everyone to today's webinar on Search Engine Optimization, SEO 101, What You Need to Know. Uh, my name is Kevin Vahidi. I'm the Marketing Manager here at Stamps.com. And uh, today I'll be joined with my, by my colleague, Eric Nash, who is our Director of Online Marketing and uh, Social Media here at Stamps.com. I want to welcome everyone. Good morning, good afternoon if you're on the East Coast. Thank you for spending this hour with us. Our goal is really to spend uh, no more than 35 to 40 minutes or so on the presentation and allow enough time for questions uh, towards the end. I always mention this, though, if you have any additional questions, you can always reach us, whether it's during the webinar, after the webinar. We're always available, and all the contact information that you need will be displayed uh, promptly as soon as we are done with the webinar so that you can continue to communicate with us. Of course, should we have also any technical difficulties, feel free to let us know. Um, that's what the questions and chat boxes are for. Whether you have questions or any other issues that come up, just let us know. We have a team that's here ready to handle hopefully just about anything uh, that comes up. So um, just uh, you know, another thing I wanted to mention, this is our first webinar of 2011. Uh, so before we get into everything, I'm actually going to also just show a couple of, uh, actually just one summary slide uh, about uh, Q4 2010 and the holiday season. Last year, we spent a lot of time talking about what to do to increase sales during the holidays, uh, what sort of promotions to put together. So we have some nice figures now that we can look at, which you may have already seen, but I wanted to share that with you. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started with our webinar today. Again, SEO 101, what you need to know. What you need to know excuse me. So as I just alluded to, uh, the uh, first slide really just talks about its quick recap of 2010 e-commerce holiday sales. Um, so very good results. Uh, you know, all the predictions showed anywhere from you know, project, projected anywhere from seven to ten to twelve percent increases. And now that we, all the numbers have come in, you can see here that the official holiday season period of the 49 days from November 1st to December 19th, e-commerce spending on holiday gifts increased basically up 12 percent from uh, the year before. Now, if you look at the figures below, something that's even more interesting here, as you'll see as you go along from left to right, we've got all the important days highlighted here. Thanksgiving Day was up 28% over last year. Black Friday was up 9%. Cyber Monday, 16%. And you'll see a big jump in the free shipping day, which was on December 17th, 61%. Uh, the reason I like to highlight that is because we spent a lot of time in Q4 on our webinars stressing how important free shipping promotions could be to your business. Um, there's different variations of them, and definitely, you know, a lot of lot of you have these available on your sites, and a lot of uh, consumers took advantage of these. But just to show that uh, increasingly this year there were more of these offers and promotions out there, and uh, and the result is a huge increase in sales, 61 percent. Um, we will have more webinars discussing these types of promotions and free shipping, and giving you more detail on how to actually structure it so that it's profitable for your business. That'll be upcoming. Um, uh, we'll have another one of these webinars uh, in Q2 that'll specifically focus on on these types of promotions. So just quickly wanted to hit on that um, before we move forward. And then going into today's webinar, um, just wanted to also throw this out so everyone sort of sees this number, because I, 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 we do believe this is an important figure. A lot of you may be familiar with this. Um, you know, interesting stats regarding where do searchers actually click on a results page. So this takes us right into today's topic. Um, so if you just look at this pie chart, you can see if automatically 72%, um, you know, click only on the first page. And that's where they, they look for information. That's where they click. Another 14% move on to the second page. And then we've got 8% on the third, and another 6% or so on the fourth page, now, or more than three pages. If you're like me, you actually don't even make it past the first page. Uh, it's very rare that I actually go on to the second page. And even if I do, it's only the first three or four listings. So again, this stresses the importance of you know not only being indexed, but over time, hoping that you actually can increase your rank and end up somewhere where you're on the first page and, and, and increase your visitors to your website, which can ultimately only benefit you, as long as you've taken care of everything else and presented the information properly on your website, of course. Uh, and another fact, uh, I just wanted to show that to you as well, 15 billion searches conducted every month on Google. Also a very important figure there, um, so you can see that definitely there's a lot of activity, and uh, you, you definitely should have some sort of SEO strategy so that you can at least be indexed and and uh, and move forward with a long-term strategy. Today's agenda, just to give you an overview, it's going to basically talk about four different things, but we're going to spend most of our time on the first two, SEO basics 
Uh, we're going to make sure that we cover some of the important basics so that you are all familiar exactly what SEO is and how it functions. And also then we're going to spend a lot of time on optimizing site content. And then finally, we're just going to wrap up quickly a couple of things about uh, converting the search traffic, which is obviously very important uh, once you get customers to your site, and also leveraging social media. We're just going to hit on a couple of things that you already may be aware of, but we figured you know, these are important and they tie into the overall SEO strategy. Now, before moving into the actual meat of the presentation, I wanted to just sort of get, get a feel for what our audience is all about, exactly what your knowledge of SEO is. Uh, so I'm hoping um, that you could answer this question. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll right now. Essentially, the question is, on a scale of 1 to 5, how would you rate your knowledge of SEO? So go ahead and uh, go ahead and respond for us if you can. And we'll just give it a few more seconds. Most of the votes are coming in. And we thought this would be interesting just to find out exactly what our audience is comprised of and, and how familiar you are with this topic in general. OK, looks like um, we have, we'll give it another four or five seconds. We've got about 90% of the vote coming in. I'll give it another five seconds so we can go over, over 92 or 3. OK, so we're going to go ahead and close the polls. Thank you for voting. And it pretty much looks like uh, we've got an overwhelming response. 92% have voted. So I will now close the poll and share this with you so that you can see for yourself the results. So as you can see here, 49% of you uh, have basic knowledge of SEO, 35% not much at all, and then we have basically a total of 16% that feel that they're strong enough, and 5% and of that is very knowledgeable as a four, and there's definitely no experts online. So this is good because today's uh, content it, you know, is, is, is basically, it covers a lot of the basics. We touch on some more advanced things as well, but definitely the intent is to bring you up to speed with, and, and you know, make sure that you have a good, strong knowledge of SEO to move forward, and then we'll have subsequent webinars that will be more advanced and more targeted to other topics. OK, so we'll go ahead and just get started with SEO basics. First and most important thing, and most of you I'm sure are aware of this, you know, we wanted to show you exactly what organic search does and what SEO is all about. The whole point of SEO is to get non-paid traffic, uh, and, and that best represents SEO efforts as that traffic that arrives to your site without you having to pay for it is done through organic search. You can see on a search page when you go on Google and, for example, search for a Canon digital camera or anything else, you'll see the first three listings will always be paid search. On the right panel, everything that's there is going to be also paid search. And then in the middle, you'll have organic search. And that is what SEO is geared towards. Everything you do in search engine optimization is essentially driven geared towards organic search so that you, your pages can be indexed by Google or other search engines. And then therefore, over time, you can increase your rank to get to a place where you're getting a, in a substantial amount of visitors. Now, that's one of the things. Obviously, there's other goals as well. But this is definitely one of the most important basics that we wanted you to be familiar with. Now. I wanted to also talk about the importance of exactly just how does this work? How does a search engine find your web page or get it indexed? So understanding how it all works is very important. And this is essentially all the, the basics that you would need to know if someone asks you how does this actually work, you could potentially try to explain. And we're, we're trying to keep a lot of the technology out of this and just sort of try to explain to you how this works. So it's really all it is, is the search engines, as you can see here, collect the data about unique websites by sending electronic spiders to visit sites and register content. Spiders collect that information and then you know, regularly, a uh, few, several times a day, actually go through all the sites and all the pages that exist and try to compile as much information and uh, basically add to the database. Google's database, as you can see here in the, in the second bullet, measures in the tens of billions. So there's a lot of records there. And spiders actually read the content just like you would read a newspaper. It starts basically from the top and it goes to the bottom. But keep in mind, spiders actually read majority of this is the first, let's say, 200 to three, 400 lines of that page. So definitely focusing on the top part of the page. And it's important to get most of that information, such as keywords, which we'll talk about in just a few minutes, in the top part. 
Uh, two other important things to keep in mind. Spiders cannot read Flash. So while Flash adds a lot of its you know, great value, makes the website look nice, um, you, you, you have to structure it properly so that it doesn't take over uh, the important sections of the page where the spiders are unable to read the content. And very important, last but not least on this page, uh, the, 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 the last bullet to pay attention to, they only read text, not images. Uh, again, ties back into the Flash. So just keep in mind, content is king. It's very important that you have text in there and not just a series of images, as this is, a, is one of the main, main basics of, uh, of a search engine optimization. Now, continuing with more basics. Overall, what you want to do with search engine optimization is you, you clearly want to create a you know, unique content that's rich in keywords. Keywords are going to be very important, and we're going to have more detail on that in just a minute. You want to avoid generic headings and titles for pages. Name the pages as they are, what they describe. It's important to use those actual words and make sure that they're clear and that they're not generic, that they're descriptive. Again, we'll talk about that in just a minute. And also, um, thirdly, optimize the site structure. Google loves silos, and, and Google wants to see all related content basically naturally under a heading. So uh, Google likes sites that have this hierarchical you know, system in their architecture, and they're formatted in silos. It's very important to ensure that your site is structured this way if you want to boost your page ranking, because essentially this is a system within which it's or structure that Google actually looks to, to find pages and index them. Uh, and also, finally, focus on long-term strategy. SEO is all about long term. You're not going to be, uh, you're not going to see a payoff, you know, right away or overnight with SEO. SEO efforts usually pay off in the long term. So you can't do any overnight fixes with it. So it's important now at the beginning of the year to realize that you've got a lot of time, and you know, hopefully by the time the next holiday season comes around or whatever you're you're looking forward to, you have hopefully plenty of time to start implementing some sort of strategy after today's webinar, so that you have some sort of uh, again strategy in place, so your pages can start getting indexed. Um, if you want to make an instant impact, uh, pay-per-click is actually the way to go. But that's not something we're going to discuss on this webinar. We will have one dedicated to that later on. Um, but again, uh, you, know, you can reap in many benefits of SEO over time by just implementing a clear SEO plan and taking advantage of the free tools that are available to you. And as a quick summary, and, and if we want to highlight what the actual benefits of SEO are, clearly one of, you know, these are the, the the, the four basic benefits, not necessarily in this order, but these are some important things to highlight. Obviously, rankings. You know, this is what what many people want out of SEO as rankings. But you know, we'll discuss other benefits in just a minute that are far more important, which include visitors. You know, once you start getting your rankings, you have to you know even for low volume but important keywords, you start to see your visitor count rise. So again, it's it, this is good, but not the ultimate goal as you're trying to uh, you know, achieve other things as well. But but it's important to keep in mind that not only are rankings important, but once rankings take effect, you're going to have more visitors. And therefore, once you have the visitors, you have to be able to convert. The biggest goal and the biggest benefit out of this is, of course, conversion, the end-all, be-all purpose of search engine optimization. SEO is more than just helping you get the rankings and that drive the traffic. You obviously want to uh, help increase conversion counts and percentages. And of course, conversion can be anything. It doesn't have to be a sale. It could be obviously the, the purchase of a product for many many times that is a conversion for many people, but it could also be a comment on your blog, a download of a white paper, you know, follow on Twitter, anything that you feel is valuable to your business is a conversion, and you can consider it that way. And finally, in, you know, this is very important. SEO is free. It may be time consuming. It may take some time to actually put the right strategy in place and see the benefits come through, but but for first and foremost, it's free. So that is a clear benefit. Um, you don't don't have to pay dime to actually um, you know to to start making an impact in the world of SEO. So we're going to move forward to the next section now, and this is where the uh, you know, majority of the information we're going to provide for you is optimizing your site's content. Uh, the top five best ways to increase visibility and ranking on your site: uh, number one, selecting the right keywords; number two, URLs and title tags. Um, also, the importance of site maps. We're going to hit on that in just a minute. And number four, inbound links, very important. And finally, internal links. We're going to go ahead and give you more details on these separately just in, in just a moment. But as a summary, I wanted to highlight the top five ways we feel uh, you can increase your visibility and ranking by optimizing your, your site. So to select the right keywords, 
there are some suggestions here on, on this page. But essentially, there's no point going after high rankings for keywords that no one searches for. So you want to make sure that you compare relative popularity of keywords once you've brainstormed and you've written down your keywords. Find out if these keywords are actually relevant to what searchers use to get to your site. And, and, and then place them in the appropriate places. One tool that you can use is AdWords Google. Uh, they have a keyword tool that is essentially free to use. And you can use that to your benefit in finding out what keywords people are searching for. Uh, it's also helpful to consider using long tail keywords that describe exactly what you're selling. For example, ultra slim black top, black laptop, excuse me, versus laptop. Obviously, if you use laptop, there's many hundreds of thousands of websites that are using laptop. So it's important to have something that adds a description. Therefore, the definition of a long tail keyword is the example you see here, ultra slim black laptop. It adds more description to exactly what those, the keywords are and what, what the ultimate product is people are searching for. Also, very helpful to do competitive analysis. Check out your competitor sites and pay close attention. Uh, to what they're using. You can definitely take a look at their pages and see what's on there, and you can try to use the same strategy. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of words out there, but it definitely helps to, to do a Google search and see what pages are ranking high, and then see how those words are being used and in what way are they're being used. That's just one part uh, of the big picture, but that definitely can, can help you get on the right track in selecting the right keywords. This is the keyword tool that I mentioned on the previous slide. Uh, which is a free tool you can use uh, from Google. Uh, essentially here, you can go on and put in keywords and search for keywords or phrases, and it'll come up and it actually will show you what the keyword is, what the competition level is. Uh, and, and, and one quick thing to note here on this uh, slide, global is actually uh, stands for the whole world, and local is US-based. So you can actually sort these searches uh, to see the highest traffic getters uh, for keywords. And at this point, uh, I wanted to uh, introduce Eric Nash, who's our director of online marketing, uh, and so that you can see he has extensive experience with this, and I wanted him to actually uh, be able to add some some important information for you here as well. Eric, thanks, Kevin. Um, yeah, I think one other thing I wanted to mention is is um, is for people to use their site analytic tools um, to find keywords. It's a great option to find out what type of uh, keywords are driving traffic to your site, as well as what type of keywords are, are driving conversions, whatever that conversion may be, whether it be a, a purchase or a, a lead or a download of a white paper or whatever it may be. Um, your analytic tools are going to be a great resource for finding keywords. Um, and you know, if, you don't, if you're not familiar with analytic tools, um, some of the most popular ones, Amateur, Core Metrics, those are very expensive. Probably the most popular one is, um, is free, and that's Google Analytics. Um, so it's very easy to implement on your site. Um, it's, again, it's free. If you're not familiar with it, just type go into Google and type in uh, Google Analytics, and you can set up your account very easily. You'll put in some code on each page of your website, um, and then it will start tracking all kinds of good stuff. So uh, I certainly would, uh, would suggest looking for good keyword options there. And then like you said, Kevin, um, the keyword tool in Google's AdWords system is a great option for expanding um, or learning to find out uh, what type of keywords have a lot of search volume. Um, you know, it's, there's a, a fine line there between finding keywords that have a lot of search volume, but maybe might not convert very well, to finding keywords that have a lot less search volume, but might be a lot more helpful um, in getting a qualified customer to your site. Thanks, Eric. Uh, moving on to the second uh, important part of optimizing your site content, URLs and title tags very important to create descriptive URLs that easily communicate the content of that page. We can't stress enough how important that is. Don't hide what the actual product is in the URL. Make sure that it's there. And in fact, you want to keep your important keywords as close to the left side of the URL as possible. Stay away from only using product numbers. There's a lot of sites that use product numbers. The web crawlers and spiders can't really detect that. Uh, they want to see the actual description, the actual name of the product. So as best as you can, try to include that before you include any sort of product number. Uh, it's always best to have the product name and then the description included in the URL. And now, uh, you pr uh, create, uh, also create keyword-specific rather than dynamic URLs. Uh, example could be you know, product number that means nothing to the search spider versus one with keywords. Uh, so you know, 
just keep in mind that you want to keep those title tags as short as possible, as descriptive as possible, and as comprehensible as possible. If someone just steps in and looks at it and it has a bunch of numbers and can't figure it out, you know, what exactly that stands for, that's essentially the same way the uh, Google Spider, the web crawlers are going to feel when they come across it. They're not going to be able to understand what it is and it's not going to really help you in uh, you know, optimizing the content in the way you want to do it. So again, uh, the very quick uh, summary of this slide, is, this content is keep them short and as descriptive as, uh, as, as you can. Thirdly, it's very important to have sitemaps. Now, of course, some of you may already have this, but, but there's two kinds of sitemaps, and I'll touch on that in just a second. I'll show you an example. But you want to make sure that you generate an XML sitemap and submit it to Google, Bing, or Yahoo anytime you have an updated page, or updated products, updated content, anytime you update something and it's, you know, it's an addition to your website, make sure that you add that to the XML sitemap and submit it. Um, and, and obviously this table of contents that, that you're going to submit, it's going to show everything that's on your website and it's going to show the relationship to each other, which is very important. Uh, it's important to show exactly what the relationships are, keep them in the silo format and make it easier for the spiders to actually find and see the information and be able to take it in and register all of that. Without the sitemap, chances are the search engines don't really know about what content's available on your site. Uh, so you may not move up as rapidly as you would like to or be indexed as quickly as you would like to. I'm going to go ahead and show you a couple of uh, just quick examples here so that you can see exactly what we're talking about when we, uh, when we refer to this. Uh, so if you look at our website, stance.com, you can see here this is the sitemap we have on our website. So if you go on the homepage, stamps.com, and if you actually click on the sitemap link, this is what everyone will see. And you can see that everything is categorized under certain categories, and it is in silo format, and we've got all of our pages here. Now, the XML sitemap looks like this. Now, obviously, there's, this looks way more advanced from a technology standpoint. You know, there's a lot of coding here now. This is the XML sitemap that you want to make sure you update whenever you have new pages and submit to the search engine. So that's what we're referring to when we say XML sitemap. Uh, again, if you have any questions about this, make sure you're sending your questions in. We have people that are uh, helping us right now, our analysts, uh, that can answer just about any question for you. So uh, don't hesitate to do so either now or at the end of the webinar. So. Uh, again, just to recap on sitemaps, make sure you update them and make sure that you submit them to the search engines once you do have the update. Moving forward on optimizing site content, a very important uh, section here on inbound links. Uh, these are links from pages on external sites that link back to your site. Uh, these could be directories, blogs, editorial articles, and, and other things as well. We'll touch on that in just a moment. But essentially, inbound links are there to bring you new visitors, new users to your site. Um, and and it's the, the more important uh, part of this is, of course, these have to be trustworthy websites, trustworthy links. Um, as you can see here, merit-based links send positive signals to Google. So it's important, and that builds authority. Uh, so this, all of these work to help increase your uh, ranking of your pages. Authoritative directories such as Yahoo directory are quality, and they help to improve your page rank. Now, that's not the only thing that's out there. There are, there, there are free, um, uh, free tools as well. DMOZ.org is a free tool. Again, it's DMOZ.org, um, and, that, and that's a good one to use. Uh, there are other paid directories. Uh, I mentioned Yahoo. Yahoo is actually $299 per year, uh, but it is an authoritative directory that is worthwhile to be a part of. But also keep in mind, you want to be a part of those directories that are relevant to your business. Uh, so if you're a B2B company, uh, business.com might be a good idea. ThomasNet.com would be also a good idea. You want to search and find out what those directories are that are relevant to your business and make sure you're listed on those. Also, you want to be aware of link farms. Um, and, and regarding link farms, they're, they're, those actually charge. Um, and uh, there are SEO agencies out there that also guarantee high-ranking positions. Essentially, uh, again, I'll pull in Eric into this because he has some experience with this, uh, but it's, it's nearly impossible to guarantee a ranking. Um, and so, uh, you know, Google likes to see you grow organically, gradually. Um, so, uh, Eric, uh, can you add some uh, perspective to that for us? Yeah, regarding inbound links, it, you know, you really want to um, focus on finding good quality sites and, and good quality methods. Um, you know, 
as you mentioned, directories uh, such as dmoz.org, our Yahoo directory, or, or really there's a directory probably on every type of, uh, of business category out there. Maybe smaller, but it's probably out there. So just do your research. Look to find um, directories out there that, that make sense. Um, some of them do require a payment, um, but you know you can do some research on Google and, and look to see if there's any type of funny business going on um, with those. Most of the the good ones out there usually will will be free ch of charge, so um, that's good news. Yahoo is the one exception there, and, and there might be uh, another one or two that charge that are bigger sites such as Business.com. Um, but really, inbound links are um, are something you need to work on over time. Um, and like you mentioned here, uh, a blog is a great way of having a um, of an inbound a new inbound link opportunity that gives you full control over what keywords uh, in the text that you would uh, highlight to go to a particular page on your website. Um, content distribution networks are another great way. Um, and probably uh, uh, the best way would be um, press releases. You do a press release on your company. Um, whether you put it out on a paid wire service such as Market Wire or PR Newswire, um, or there's tons of smaller freebie um, press release distribution networks um, that will get your press release out there and onto other sites. Um, and then, of course, in your press release, you want to make sure you have some um, chosen keyword text uh, linked to back to a particular page in your site. It doesn't necessarily need to be directly to your um, regular. Uh, home page of your site. You can go into content pages on your site. Um, so those are all great methods of building inbound links. But like you said, Kevin, there are some um, some services out there that are definitely um, kind of a scam. Um, you want to really watch yourself on those. Make sure you do a lot of due diligence, research the companies, ask for references. Make sure you talk to those companies, those references, um, and see. Uh, kind of find out some before and after. There are no guarantees in uh, Google uh, or in any of the natural search engine optimization. Nobody can guarantee you a particular placement on a page. Um, Google constantly is changing their algorithm every day. Um, you know, it, it's just a very, very hard uh, subject to, to guarantee anybody anything in terms of a ranking. So it's a very slow process. Make sure, you know, there, there really are no um, get rich quick systems in, in natural search. It's something that takes time. Um, Google loves to see things build organically and slowly. Um, and so just keep working at it, and, and you'll start to see uh, your site getting ranked higher. Thanks, Eric. Earlier, we were also talking internally about uh, the difference between internal links, obviously, then uh, I'm sorry, inbound links and internal links. And uh, I wanted to actually sort of round out this part of the uh, presentation with uh, internal links. And I was hoping you can also take us through this. Absolutely. Um, internal links are, are links that, um, I'm going to go off script here a little bit, um, but an internal link is, is essentially um, is a link inside your website that is going to link to another page on your site. Um, you know, it, it's, uh, it's very important. A lot of people forget about this, um, about internal links. Um, and so, you know, when people come to your site, the way you, you find other content is by looking at your navigation or through articles or through text on, on the site um, and finding and looking for links. And so Google loves to see things in silos, like you said, Kevin. Um, so if in our example, we have you know uh, postage online, we have shipping pages, we have postage meter pages. So as you go to into each of those categories, you'll be able to link off into other pages that are under that same category. So in shipping, for example, we have done many different pages that are, are focused solely on shipping and they come under that category and those links to those existing shipping pages are all on our, our main shipping page um, and so it's very important to to not forget about internal links make sure you have them uh, make sure you focus them on particular pages that are very important you know you may have 50 different pages on a particular topic but maybe only three or four or five of them are as important as the other, or more, or, or most important of those. So make sure you're you're doing it in a, a structured manner, but also make sure if you have pages that are of much more importance than the others, make sure those pages are being linked elsewhere. Um, you you want to also avoid having a page that just has hundreds of different links on it. Um, that kind of looks a little bit more like a link bait to Google, um, and they'll be very uh, you know 
not very happy to see that type of stuff. It's kind of considered a black hat trick. So try to make sure it's a structured form uh, for internal links. Um, you know, it's the, and by internal links, also you can make sure you want to always hyperlink the text, the, the designated keyword text on the page. So in our example, we may have um, USPS shipping software highlighted on our content pages. And that clicking on that is what's going to um, take you to uh, that particular page on USPS shipping software. That highlighted text is considered anchor text. You'll see people oftentimes in SEO articles refer to that as anchor text. So make sure you're highlighting um, particular keywords that are going to make that text look more important um, versus doing something such as highlighting click here or learn more. Um, that's a common tactic you'll see on websites. And really for, for Google Spider, it comes in and sees, hey, I'm able to go to another page, but you know what? It's coming from learn more, and learn more doesn't really mean that much to me. So um, try to, to focus on uh, your internal links having good anchor text. Thanks, Eric. So just to recap for you guys, uh, for everyone, there's the, the five best ways, again, to increase visibility and ranking uh, to optimize your, your site content. Number one, selecting the right keywords, making sure that they're descriptive, um, that you have rich keywords. And obviously, once you've done competitive analysis and you've used some free tools that are out there to figure out what those keywords are, make sure that you, you include those on your pages, put them high, and make sure that they're included. Um, and, and number two, which is the title tag, uh, and your URLs. Uh, make sure that those have the keywords. Make sure that they have the product descriptions. Make sure that you do not put too many numbers and things that may be unrecognizable to the spiders. Uh, number three, the importance of sitemaps. Make sure that you update your sitemap whenever you have new content or new pages that go to your, on your website, and make sure you submit that once you've done the update to the search engine so that they are aware that you have something new on your site. Uh, and again, just to uh, just to highlight that this important fact is that the sitemaps, if you were not to you know submit this to the search engine, they would have to essentially come on their own and try to find this content, and it may or may not happen, or it may take a long time. But when you submit the sitemap, the XML version of it, that automatically tells them, hey, hello, I'm here, I've got new content, come see me. So it's going to save you a lot of time and effort, and so it's very worthwhile to uh, to make sure that you do that. Number four, inbound links, making sure that you have trustworthy sites and links out there that link to your uh, website. And then as Eric just discussed, internal links, which are also very important, and linking from within your website to other pages. If Google sees there's 50 or 60 links to one page as opposed to two to another, they will believe that that's more important and therefore put more emphasis on that page. So um, those are the five best ways to, to increase uh, visibility and ranking. Now, once you've actually done all of this hard work, and again, this, this happens over time, obviously. Uh, it takes some time to actually get this implemented. You want to be able to convert the search traffic. Now, there's a lot of things you can do, and we don't want to go into too much detail on this webinar, as we'll have other webinars dedicated to this later in the year. But the top five ways to convert search traffic, or really just any traffic that comes to your website. We, we've used this uh, earlier in some other webinars, and it's important to keep stressing that really these are the five best ways that you can convert this traffic. Uh, one, make sure you put your best product up front. If you've got something that sells, uh, put it up there. If you've got something that looks good, put it up there. Make sure you're not hiding anything. A lot of this sounds obvious, but many websites don't actually do this successfully. So make sure you take the clutter out and put your best product up front. During the holidays, Amazon took all the clutter out and they put the Kindle up front because why? Well, it, it was very popular. It sold a lot. It was on many wish lists, probably the, one of the top things on, on people's wish lists. So they knew that that was their product to sell and they had it front and center on the home page. So, you know, maybe not to that extreme, but make sure you're always putting your best products up front. Number two, create a sense of urgency. You know, obviously with the holidays, free shipping, you know, it was kind of easy to, to start that sense of urgency. Now as we're moving into the first part of the year, maybe it's a little bit more difficult, but you can still put together promotions. You can come up with different types of ways to create the sense of urgency, which ultimately is going to be very important. Um, and number three, you want to minimize your site load times. There are different ways of doing this, and you know we're not going to cover it on this webinar, but definitely send us, if you have any questions, we can go ahead and give you more detail on this. But you want to make sure that you're minimizing your site load times um, so, so that you're making it easy for your users to find what they need and make the purchase. 
Uh, four, you want to make sure that uh, you have coupons and discounts that are displayed prominently. Again, if you go to the same theory as your best products up front, don't hide anything. If you have something good to give, put it out there and take the clutter out and put emphasis on it so people can see it clearly. Um, and then finally, eye flow. It's very important. The way you read a newspaper, the way you look at a website, always keep that in mind and place everything according to that rule. Start from the top, go from the left to the right, and put the most important things in that flow so that you can see them clearly, your users and your customers can see them clearly, and more importantly, tying it back to uh, search engine optimization, that the uh, spiders and the web crawlers that are out there are able to see it in that same fashion, and they can attribute the importance of it and index your pages and, and continue to uh, get you increased and better ranked. And also, don't forget, there's also additional ways to convert traffic. In, in the way of customer service. More and more, you can now see on websites, there are boxes that are just readily available, click to call, uh, chat pop-up boxes, and search boxes. These are all customer service tools. There was a time where websites felt, OK, let's not put any of these up. We just want to sell online. That's true, but it does help. If you can provide it to provide some sort of customer service support, that has been shown, obviously, to increase sales. Um, and it's important because people want to be able to trust you. And even if they don't use it, they want to see that you have the options available. A lot of times people don't want to chat anyway, and they just want to buy the product. However, it's important to have it there because that's going to show that you're a trustworthy company. Uh, it's going to help at least. Uh, it's going to be just one other thing that you do that's going to help to, to, to convince that consumer that you, know, you are somewhere they want to make a purchase. Uh, and then you know, display user-generated reviews. Again, it goes back to the trustworthiness. You know, it's important to show what people think of you. And if you can put that out there, all of these will continue to help to convert traffic that eventually lands on your website. Finally, the uh, last section of our webinar today, we'll just spend a couple of minutes on this. Very important, obviously, social media. You're going to see on here, leveraging social media is clearly important. But what does it actually bring to the table? You know, uh, yes. So the things you see here, these are proven. It increases your brand awareness, of course. Builds your community, your followers. It engages your followers with your brand, which is very important. Everyone needs that. It facilitates customer service. People can quickly tell you how they feel about your company or product. It can be good or bad, but you have to make sure you manage this properly and quickly. Also, clearly helps to build loyalty and trust behind your brand. These are all proven uh, aspects of social media. And this is how you can leverage social media and why you should be present. Now, that obviously is a whole separate discussion. We're going to tie this back to SEO. But what you see here is, is the, the proven aspects of social media. Now, you don't see anything on this slide about proven profit, that it's going to bring you lots of revenue. It's not, or it may. There are certain companies that have been very successful at this, and certain companies, not yet. But the reality is, is once you are able to build loyalty, build trust, respond to your customers quickly, build your followers, your community, and the awareness that's out there, that can only help to drive more revenue to your company. At the end of the day, you're only increasing your chances of, of, of improving sales. So it's important to always make sure that you have some sort of social media strategy, because in the end, it can only help you in these uh, four ways that, that we just spoke of here. Now, additionally, there are three ways that social media can actually help your SEO strategy. Um, and this is number one by social content that can boost links to your website. Um, there's a couple of things to keep in mind here that we're going to quickly discuss, and that is really, uh, you know, not just any link. I mean, just by having something up on Twitter or Facebook doesn't mean that that that's going to, you know, uh, follow to your website. Social networks often use the no follow tag, so posting in Facebook or Twitter may not actually get any SEO benefit for you, but it will alert other people to your content. If the content is interesting enough, they may actually put it on their blog or on their site. And once they do so, that's when you can actually benefit from an SEO perspective so, and an inbound link. So you know, just keep in mind, it's not everything that you put up. But if it is interesting enough and if it is something that it, you know, someone finds value in, they put it on their blog or website, that brings it right back to you. And that's how you are going to continue to improve your SEO strategy and, and move up in the rankings. Uh, number two, you'll see here, we already just touched on it, but it improves qualified traffic. So then the people that are interested are actually coming to your website. Uh, and, and you know, once they've already initially found some value, and they hopefully find more once they land on your website. And then uh, three, of course, in the end, it can boost online conversions and sales. But it has to be done, again, properly 
with relevant information. At the end of the day, if you remember one thing from leveraging social media, is that you know most important of all, you want to be sure to always deliver timely, relevant content that speaks directly to the needs of your followers. Um, once you do so, you're going to continue to build your your following, and then it can only lead to bigger and uh, and, and better things when it comes to social media. Uh, we're just going to quickly wrap it up before we start the the Q and A session. Just wanted to highlight some of these free tools and. Uh, Eric, if you could just quickly touch on some of these and, and the importance of them for SEO strategy. Absolutely. Um, so I'm going to start off here with, uh, with the Google Analytics. We talked about that a little earlier. Um, it's a free service. So anybody who does not have an analytic um, tool with their website, oftentimes the web hosting companies will offer them a free analytics tool. Um, but sometimes I've, I've noticed from my own um, experience, those analytic tools just aren't that, um, they just don't go that deep. And so Google Analytics is a great option for you. It offers all kinds of different stats. You can see keywords, time spent on, on site, bounce rate, um, exit rate, all kinds of good things. Um, and so it really, like, and for an example, bounce rate is the amount of people that come to your a page via whatever method they found that page, um, and then they leave without seeing another page. And so that's a great stat to look at and analyze and say, okay, clearly I'm not offering the type of content this, these people are looking for. So I'll need to make some adjustments to my page and, and hope that I can keep these people on the site longer or hopefully leave to go or go to another page and check out more content. Um, Google uh, Webmaster Tools, and we're going to touch base on this a little bit more in the Q&A because I see a lot of questions on the site map. Actually, we can, I guess we should touch base on it right now. Google Webmaster's tool, Webmaster Tools is another free service. Um, it offers some similar um, stats that Google Analytics does, not quite as deep as analytics, but it gives you some different search terms that found your site, gives you some different um, uh, page totals um, for what sites are being seen. Um, but then it also provides you an option to upload your XML sitemap. Um, we have a lot of different questions here from Wendy and Joel and Sherry all asking, you know, where do I submit my sitemap? Well, Google Webmaster Tools is that place. You basically create your XML sitemap, um, and then once it's created, you basically will host it on your server. So it's going to be, say, you know, um, my site slash sitemap.xml. And you'll take that URL, and in Google Webmaster Tools, you'll insert that URL and say, hey, here is Google, here is my um, XML sitemap. And every time you have a new page, you want to update that XML sitemap so that, and then go in there and, and, and Google, once, it's up, once your XML sitemap is uploaded into the uh, tool, it will always come back and check. Um, in terms of creating an XML sitemap, there are also tons of free tools out there, and, and on the Webmaster Tools, uh, page, they will offer some free services to create an XML sitemap. Um, as Kevin showed you, it's not very easy to, to look at. It's got lots of code on there. It's got some different things in terms of ranking and, and how often I should come back. The free tools that create XML sitemaps make it a very easy process. You kind of just input whatever your URLs you want Google to know about. You tell it how often these pages are updated. Um, how often you want the, to come back and take a look at the pages, um, and how important they are in a, in a ranking on your site. Um, and so, the you know these free tools are will create your XML sitemap very easy. Um, they're very easy to use. Once you create it, you just upload it to your server so that it's actually live on your site, and then you take that URL and place it in the Webmaster Tools. Um, Webmaster Tools also offers some other cool features such as. Um, how Google views your site in terms of download speed. That's very important these days. Google's starting to take into consideration how fast your site downloads. Um, they're going to include that in their algorithm for natural search. Um, and then they also offer lots of other little features. So I, both of those tools are great tools, and best of all, they're free. Um, Google AdWords is a paid search option. So as Kevin mentioned earlier, natural search or SEO does take time in terms of getting ranked in Google and getting higher um, on the pages or ranked higher on the pages. If you need to have your product listed on a particular keyword on Google today or tomorrow, Google AdWords is that opportunity for you. Um, it's a paid search. 
Um, you pay on a pay per click basis, meaning um, you'll go in there and you'll input a bid, such as I, I want a dollar for everybody that comes in uh, on USPS shipping software. I'm going to bid. My maximum bid will be one dollar. Um, you'll then put in a budget and a daily budget, and then Google will display your ad at the very top or on the side, depending on how competitive it is. Um, and you'll be listed on those particular keywords within 15 minutes. It's a great tool to get listed very quickly. Oftentimes, you might want to, if you have a good ranking in natural search, you may also want to rank in paid search for that same term. Um, it just own, that gives you the opportunity to own more real estate on the page. Um, and the last tool here on Google Insights for search, what this is, this is this will provide um, search data according to Google for a particular keyword over time. So you can go in there and type in, in our example again, USPS shipping software. We can go in there and type USPS shipping software. Google Insights is going to show us how that keyword ranks in terms of total searches for uh, really over Google's lifetime. You can shorten the periods up. Uh, it, it takes the data and normalizes it, so it's not necessarily hard numbers, but it will give you an idea to see how popular your uh, search board has been over a period of time. Um, it's a great opportunity to see trends, um, see if you have particular new products, say you're uh, a product sell site. Um, clearly, if you went in there and typed on iPad, you would see iPad maybe start out you know, before it was introduced as a very lightly searched term, and then once it was introduced, shot up through the, through the, the roof there. So it's a great tool um, for you. So, but back on to some of these questions about um, Google sitemaps and creating an XML sitemap. Google Webmaster Tools is that um, tool for you to upload your XML sitemap to Google. All right, Kevin, should we jump into the Q&A? Sounds good, Eric. I think we've got a lot of good questions, so uh, we've, and we've got some good time, so you know, we can spend another five, basically five to ten minutes, and then handle as many questions as possible. Let's do it. Sounds good. So. Um, Wendy was just Wendy asked about going into more detail on the on setting up a sitemap and 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 specifically on the different versions of it. Um, you know, as we mentioned, XML sitemaps. We just went over that pretty extensively. Um, lots of free tools to create your XML sitemap. You upload it into Google Webmaster Tools, and then anytime you have a new page, you want to make sure you always add that. A regular HTML sitemap um, is a great option as well. Um, Google Spider will definitely come and, and spider it. In fact, uh, on Google Webmaster Tools, you can see some different uh, stats on what pages the spider is visiting the most often. Um, and our particular HTML sitemap is one of the most visited pages. Um, it's a great resource um, to make sure it's a kind of a backstop for your XML sitemap. Um, and also, it's a great resource for people. Just if they're coming to your site, they, for whatever reason, aren't finding what they're looking for, they can go to that sitemap and instantly find things because it's a nice, organized approach to find particular content on your page. So we certainly suggest making a, uh, an HTML sitemap along with an XML sitemap. They kind of uh, work in tandem there. Um, let's see. I've got a question here from... Jared is asking, what are some PR sites besides PR Newswires? I guess he's referring to press release distribution sites. You know, PR Newswire is a great one. PR Web is another great one. Market Wire is another great option. Um, a lot of these press release dis distribution sites now allow you to um, include videos uh, in your press releases and photos. Those are kind of called social media releases. Um, they're really trying to incorporate uh, social media into these press release uh, distributions uh, as well. So those uh, PR web is, a, is another good one. MarketWire happens to be the one that us, stamps.com, uses. Of course, these are all paid uh, distribution networks for press releases. There are a ton of free ones out there. I think if you just went in there and typed in free press release distribution, you'd probably find just a ton of uh, opportunities out there. Um, let's see. Um, Doug is asking a question about any suggestions for plugins to help with SEO in a WordPress site. Um, Doug, I certainly can feel your frustration there. Um, our our stamps.com blog is hosted on WordPress. If you go in into the apps and type in the plugins and type in you know SEO, you're going to get a thousand options. Um, and sometimes the the rankings or votes don't necessarily uh, um, you know show something that's very good. 
you know, I, I will try to email you that option. What we're currently using, um, the plugins for a WordPress blog offer you the ability to change the page title, um, the meta tags, um, the meta keywords, and a, a meta description, um, and do that all pretty easily. So, um, we'll, I'll email you that. Uh, what we're using, not that that's necessarily the best thing, but um, but certainly it's it's working for us at least in our blog. Um, I had a question here. Eric, sorry to interrupt quickly. Just no before problem. you move on to the next question, I noticed also you know we've been receiving a lot of questions and comments about will this be available before um, you know anyone else leaves uh, this session. I just wanted to let everyone know uh, this will be on our website next week. The recording of this webinar. But in the meantime, after today, once you log off, you will actually receive a follow-up email that will have a link in there to the recorded webinar, so that will be available for you right away. As soon as you receive that email, which should be within an hour of when you log off, you will have a link for the recorded webinar. And also, um, we will, you know, my email is on here. Uh, if you ever want to you know, send me any additional questions after this, uh, let me know if you don't receive the link for some reason. But this will be available. We'll have the recording and the slides available for you at any time, essentially. You'll have it right away after the, the today's meeting, and also uh, it will be ongoing on our website starting next week. Cool. Okay, I got two more quick questions here. Andrea is asking, um, and they're kind of related here. Andrea is asking, are um, are meta tags still important? And William is asking, um, what is an actual page title? Um, and so these are both great questions. So they're both meta tags are kind of what are called the the um, they're kind of a hidden way on the web page to show the search spiders um, what a page is about. The page title is basically if you go to a website ever and if you look up at the top in the blue bar, say if you're using IE, you'll see some type of um, wording about the website. And that basically is called the title tag. It gives you the ability to create that when you're creating a particular page. Um, usually you don't want to go over that uh, 6 to 12 keywords in that title. Um, the title should really describe what the page is about and, and be very descriptive. Um, but you want to make sure that titles matches the content on the page. You can't go in there and, and say have a, a page about Britney Spears records and then have or CDs or music concert um, type item or concert uh, recordings and then have nothing about Britney Spears on that particular page. It needs to be very descriptive of what the content is. Um, other parts of those meta tags are what are called meta keywords and meta description. In the old days, this is how people would optimize a page to get ranked in natural search. Um, you'd go in there and put different keywords that the page are about, um, as well as make a description of what the page was about. Also in the old days, some of the search engines would take the description and post that in the, on, their, um, on their actual site to describe what the page is. That no longer is the case. Google has found a lot of different methods of determining what they're going to post. Sometimes it's the very first sentence, or it's a mix of, of copy. Um, and, and because meta tags, such as meta description and meta keywords, were abused by so many website owners, or kind of more like web pirates, um, they've kind of reduced and don't really use that any longer. However, in Andrea's question, are they still important? You know, Google's changing so much so quickly these days. They kind of went through a, a period or a long period of not making that many changes, and now they really seem to be making lots of changes. In our opinion, it certainly doesn't hurt. To, it will never hurt you to make good meta descriptions and good meta uh, keyword tags. So we suggest you still, you know, treat them as if they do. They probably aren't right now, but you never know what's going to happen in the future. So, um, so we, you know, we suggest you might as well continue to do it. Um, and I think we're probably running out of time, Kevin. So I think all these other questions we'll have to respond back to via email. Um, so I think uh, so. I'll throw it back to you. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Uh, we will definitely respond to every question that we've received. Uh, it may take us the rest of this afternoon or until tomorrow, but we'll definitely, within 24 hours, uh, send a response to you. And again, keep in mind, if you have additional questions, anytime you like, you send me an email directly at kzahidi at stamps.com, um, or you can send them to specialtywebinars at stamps.com. Um, and again, keep in mind, the recorded link will be available for you. It'll be included in the follow-up email you'll receive in the next hour or two. Um, and also, it will be on our website starting next week. Anything webinar related, you can go to stamps.com forward slash webinars with an S. And you'll have the upcoming schedule and the archives of last year's and today's webinars on there. Uh, usually, it'll take about a week to get that on, on the uh, web page. 
but you will have it in the meantime through that uh, follow-up email. I want to thank everyone for joining us. I hope you found this to be valuable, and uh, you know, definitely let us know your thoughts. You'll have a survey coming at you right away as well. Feel free to answer that survey. We, would, in fact, would love it if you would, and then we want to continue to improve our webinars, and we'd love to hear back from you. So thank you for your time. Have a wonderful rest of the day, uh, afternoon, evening, and uh, thanks again for joining us in today's SEO 101 webinar. Bye-bye.